what is up? Today we are talking about a very controversial topic and that is abs. Your abs, your core, you know, how do you get them? 106 packs, what do you do? Here today I'm sharing my best tips for getting a strong, solid core, aka abs, and before I get into it, I just want to let you know that having abs does not mean that you are fit and having abs does not define your worth. I feel like in the fitness industry, everyone is like, oh my god, abs, blah, blah, blah. Body type and genetics play a huge role. So don't focus on having abs because there's a lot more better, more motivational things to focus on than just having abs, all right? So let's get into number one. And this is in the gym. What you need to be doing for abs is strength training. <laughs> I'm not talking about doing weighted sit-ups. I'm talking about strength training your overall body, doing squats, doing deadlifts, doing shoulder press, doing bench press. All of these movements are already engaging your core, whether you think you're doing it or not, because you, if you have proper form, your chest is proud, your shoulders down your back, your core is engaged to perform these movements with proper form. And when you're building overall muscle, you're actually decreasing fat in your entire body, you can't spot reduce fat, so you're gonna be more likely to see definition in your abs without even doing strictly ab movements when you're strength training. So I highly suggest strength training in the gym, not just focusing on cardio and ab movements, as soon as I, guys, as soon as I started strength training, my ab definition got so much more fuller and defined than just having like baby abs from doing cardio and like Pilates in my room all day. So tip number one is strength training, strength training hard, and not just doing like weighted crunches. Y'all feel me? You feel me? Okay. Tip number two is cardio. Yes? No? Maybe? Okay. <laughs> So this is different for everyone. Some people are genetically more lean and can carry muscle mass like in a more lean type of way opposed to having extra fat. So it's like, how much cardio should I do? What kind of cardio should I do? You can do HIIT cardio. It's more effective because it is more effective in less time. You can do a 10, 15, 20 minute HIIT session and burn more fat than doing steady rate cardio for like an hour or two hours because who wants to do that? Personally, not me. But if you do, you do you. So three times a week, four times a week, nothing crazy, guys. 10, 15, 20 minutes. Do hit movements. So you can do hits on the treadmill doing sprints. Um, you can do body weight to so like burpees, plank jacks, mountain climbers, all kinds of stuff. And then if you want, instead of resting in between, you can do those ab mo movements that actually really define your ab muscles, okay? So that's my take on cardio. So what about the targeted ab movements like I just mentioned? So that is my tip number three. You do not have to focus on targeted ab movements, but you need to build that strong foundation like I mentioned before with strength training and your HIIT cardio. And then if you want, you can focus on those targeted ab movements to really make your muscles pop. But you do not have to do this. You might find with strength training and a little bit of cardio, you don't have to do much to work your abs because you're working them already with your squats, with your strength training. But if you want specific ab movements, I would focus on things like plank, side plank, because you're really, really engaging your core and challenging yourself, then just doing crunches all day is not gonna get you anywhere. So I have some movements that are my personal favorite for your abs and your obliques that I'm gonna show you at the end. Tip number four is diet. Should I eat? Should I be dieting? Should I be restricting carbs? What should I do? Guys, I'm gonna be straight up. I eat all foods, all food groups. But do I go to McDonald's every single day? No, it's all about balanced eating, okay? You can have your Big Mac and you can have your abs too. You just have to do it in a smart way. It's all about balance. And you don't need to diet. You need those carbs for energy, for your strength training. When you focus on strength training and HIIT, your body turns into a fat burning machine. So you don't need to be dieting because if you're dieting, you're not gonna build muscle. And guys, abs, are a muscle just like your biceps are a muscle, okay? So just, just remember that, balance. 
There's no nutrition tip. There's no whatever. It's all about balance. You don't need to restrict anything. I eat all foods, all food groups. You can have the body that you love while not depriving yourself, okay? And my last tip, number five, is decrease stress. So, so let's just put this together. If you are working out, that decreases stress because hello, happy hormone. And if you're not dieting, you don't have to worry about stressing over food and calories. You can enjoy food in a balanced way. But if you have other stressors in your life, like work or school or relationships, you have to find ways to decrease that because having a lot of cortisol in your tummy area equals bloatage, equals not so fun stuff happening there. And it's just not healthy, overall health, guys. So find ways to de-stress. I like to de-stress by watching TV shows, by journaling, by hanging out with people who I love, by going to yoga. So find something that you do every single day to de-stress, okay? Don't focus so much on social media and what other people look like. Just focus on you. And that's, that's honestly, when you are a little bit selfish, it's okay to be a little bit selfish and focus on you. Life becomes so much more less stressed and just you feel free and you feel good. So my tips to some ab muscles, you know, what I'm saying, whether they show or whether they don't, also depends on lighting and angles and, you know, how you twist and turn and twerk and whatever. But anyways, here are some moves that I enjoy that actually really target and strengthen your entire core, which aren't just your six pack, by the way, your entire core is all around here. It actually includes your lower back and your glutes. So a lot of plank movements, you will see it and I will do the voiceover right now. All right, this first move, you are in plank position. It works so good for your abs and obliques. You're literally just kicking one leg and twisting it to the other side while keeping your hips as square as you can. It's a total body move, guys. Focus on shoulders and obliques and abs. Second move, here we have, you're still in full plank position, but this time we're twisting side to side. If you have shoulder issues, I would suggest doing this move from your elbows, but you get more of a range of motion when you do this uh, from full plank. Next, we have side plank dips, and my feet are elevated to, again, get a greater range of motion so I can dip down more to work my ab and oblique muscles. You're also working your shoulders with this move. So as you can see, no crunches involved, all plank variations to truly engage those core muscles. Let me know if this is beneficial and what you guys want to see in the next video.